Okay, the Lord be with you. Living God, you become the real food that we need to feed ourselves, to share with others, and to know what it feels like to be alive. Thank you for this gift, for this opportunity to serve, and for this challenge. Please help us to keep your gifts of peace and love alive and growing. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, St. John's. It's good to see everybody this morning. Welcome, welcome. I'm looking around and, oh, that's right, Tiago, run, run, run. Um, uh, looks like I see some new faces, so um, if you are new, hey, we're glad you're here. Uh, I can also see some new faces in the online balcony. That's right, we have powers. We know who you are. Uh, we're glad to have you as well. And it's Bach to School Sunday. It's uh, uh, the start of a new school year, a new program year. So we are especially happy to have our Bach Parley String Academy playing today during the service. And in just a little bit, we'll have the blessing of the backpacks. Several years ago, around this time of year, when things are starting to amp up and we're getting ready for new ministries and retraining people for ministries, uh, at my last church, we hosted right around this time of year a diocesan-wide overnight acolyte festival, a training for all the acolytes from across south and coastal Georgia. Dozens and dozens of acolytes from the tall to the small descended upon our church property, and one of our big activities during that acolyte festival was a massive scavenger hunt put together by yours truly. Now, in my planning, I wanted to come up with something that would educate all those young acolytes to create friendships and fellowship among them, to train them in everything they needed to know about how to set the altar, how to swing the thurible, that's the thing with the incense, how to hold the cross if they were a crucifer, how to play with fire in church. I wanted them to know all these things, but most importantly, because there were like a hundred of them and it was an overnight event, I also wanted to wear them out. So I hunkered down and made a 17-point scavenger hunt complete, mind you, with rhyming clues that sent teams of acolytes running sweaty and red-faced from point to point all across the campus. Listen to this. Y'all ready? I'm going to drop some of these clues on y'all. See if you can guess what they are. This is the place where we join the church and become God's sons and daughters. Whether young or old, rich or poor, the Spirit meets you here in the waters. That's good, right? Yep, yep, the baptismal font. When people read and speak with joy, the congregation never gets bored. This is the place where we stand and proclaim the timeless word of the Lord. That's right, that's right. They're really good clues, like they rhyme and stuff, y'all, right? I didn't even have to drop those in there. They're not really germane to the sermon. I'm just still proud of them all these years later. But clues built upon clues to create more clues, and in the end, you had to unscramble all those clues to find the answer to the final question. And as I put this thing together, I felt like a great wizard, like a mad scientist, like an evil genius. And as the scavenger hunt went on, I sat in the glorious air conditioning of our nice, cool sanctuary. Y'all remember air conditioning. <laughs> and teams of acolytes inevitably came to me to ask, Father Lonnie, can't you just give us a clue? Father Lonnie, when can we eat? Father Lonnie, what is the point? To which I would say, nope. Sorry, y'all. You're not done yet. <laughs> it was not easy, but they all made it through with flying colors. But the funny truth is that as all of that unfolded, I thought of stories like what we've heard today and in recent weeks. We're in that time in the lectionary where Jesus is going on and on and on about the bread of life. We've had that for several Sundays. I think we're going to have it more. Hope you're hungry. You're getting a lot of bread of life when you come to St. John's right now. But watching them run around and do all of that, it reminded me of some of the Old Testament stories that we hear as well, like the story of the prophet Elijah from the Old Testament today. When we meet up with Elijah, he is on the run. 
Elijah is a prophet, but the thing about prophets is they have big mouths, which often gets them into trouble. And so at this point, Elijah has spoken out against the wayward king Ahab and his wicked wife Jezebel, and they want him dead. So here he is in the desert, tired, bedraggled, and in despair. Elijah thought he was going to be a mighty prophet. Elijah thought he would be the voice of God. Elijah thought he would speak and everyone would listen. But now, just look at him, on the run, with no shade, no food, no rest, no hope. And so he sits there and asks, Oh Lord God, can't you just give me a clue? Oh Lord God, when can I eat? Oh Lord God, what is the point? To which God calmly replies, Nope, sorry Elijah, I'm not done with you just yet. And then suddenly, mysteriously, miraculously, bread and water appear before him to give him strength for the journey. I wonder, have you ever felt this way at some point in your life? I'm willing to bet that a lot of you in here know exactly what it's like to be running around searching for clues, searching for hope, searching for God. Maybe in some way you know exactly what it's like to be hungry and humbled or feeble and frail or starving and stuck out in the desert all alone. Your desert may look different than Elijah's did, but we all know something about the wilderness. Well, if you do, you're not alone. From Moses and the Israelites to Elijah and the prophets, everyone has taken their turn out in the desert. Everyone has been running in circles, looking for bread, looking for hope, looking for God. And in the old days, the days of Moses and Elijah, if you were lucky, God would provide you with a little bit of hope, a little bit of bread, a couple hoe cakes on a rock or a little manna out in the front yard, just enough to tide you over, or as my daddy used to say, enough to hold body and soul together. But you know, the funny thing about seeking, the funny thing about searching, the funny thing about scavenger hunts is that sometimes the thing you've been looking for is right under your nose. Sometimes the thing you most want is so close you could bite it and is hidden in plain sight. Sometimes it's not that you're not looking hard enough. Sometimes it's that you're looking too hard and time after time you pass it by. This happened several times that day during that acolyte scavenger hunt, and I believe it's often what happened with Jesus. See, the whole world had been looking for hope, looking for bread, looking for God, and finally, all three showed up in him. And not as some piddly cakes on a rock or manna from the wilderness, but as nothing less than Jesus, the Son of God, right there in the flesh, and yet people kept missing him. God saw how hungry we were, and how lost we were, and said, you know what? I'm calling off the scavenger hunt. I'm giving in. I'm going in. I'm going to go into their world, and I'm going to give them everything I have, everything I am. No more clues, just me, right there in plain view, right there under their noses. He could not have made himself any plainer, but they still missed him. And many of us still miss him even today, all because we're looking too hard. When Jesus says, I am the bread of life, what he's saying is, y'all, I'm not pointing to the thing. I am the thing. I'm not just enough to hold body and soul together. I am the body and soul, capital B, capital S. So come, see me in the flesh. Get close enough to take a bite, for I am the thing you've been looking for. Your long and crazy quest is over. 
Y'all, that's the grace for you today. It's why you came to church, whether you know it or not. So as we begin a new school year, a new program year, as we dive in and recommit to our ministries at church, and as we seek to grow in spirit and to become even more faithful and fruitful Christians, all of which are great things, just remember that you can run yourself ragged if all you're trying to do is to be more spiritual or piece together all the clues or find all the answers. Y'all, that rat race is over, has been for 2,000 years. He who was spiritual has now come in the flesh. He who was the clues has now become the answer and the prize. He who was hidden from our eyes is now in plain sight, close enough that you could bite him. The good news for you today is that you don't have to go searching for God anymore. God has already come searching for you. The hunt is over, y'all, and our God delights in what he has found in you. Amen.